The COVID-19 pandemic has set the world aback, but we healthcare professionals had to repost to this setback. While we fight this global pandemic, the patients and our safety is of utmost importance. It has been well documented that COVID-19 can be transmitted by droplet and aerosol spread. To unravel this enigma, we came up with a string of experiments. The pivoting question behind our experiments was if aerosols are generated during phacoemulsification. Abundant speculation regarding the same has built fear in the minds of one and all. To begin with, we set up a wet lab demonstration. We stained the irrigation fluid with Dryfin blue for better visualization of any splatter. To our surprise, we did not find any visible droplets being emitted during phacoemulsification. But to satisfy our curiosity, we took a step further and collaborated with the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, the workplace of Nobel laureate Dr. C. V. Raman. The PhD scholars led by Dr. Basu from the fluid velocimetry team helped us set this up. The vast array of information which could be formulated truly intrigued us. The high-speed, ultra-high-resolution camera could capture 20,000 frames per second. With this, even the smallest of aerosols can be picked up. We performed a succession of tests on both artificial anterior chamber and goat's eyes. We played around with different incision and sleeve sizes. We observed that in matched sleeve and incision sizes, there was no aerosols picked up at all. However, when the incision size exceeded the sleeve size, there was a slow steady leak from the main port but yet lack of aerosols. The results were exactly the same. No aerosols whatsoever. However, when we performed FACO with a fixed probe at the corneal lip outside the eye, we found abundant atomization of the fluid of the ocular surface and, in turn, copious aerosolization. We even performed a series of non-contact tonometry experiments. We noted that no aerosols were produced during the same. However, on installation of a drop of lubricant prior to the NCT test, minimal aerosols were observed. Having gained immense confidence from this, we decided to proceed with cataract surgery. Even an ultra-slow motion smartphone camera could not detect any droplets generated during the same. By proving so, we intend to put the surgeon's minds at ease. To reassure one's protection, we recommend these simple steps. Betadine gargle and nasal spray for patients just before surgery to decrease the viral load if any, especially critical in GA patients where the chance of aerosol spread is more. Sanitization after donning and doffing is advisable. Using a sanitization chamber, which if built in-house, would barely cost around 15,000 rupees for additional precautions. Since there is a huge shortage of N95 masks, sterilizing them with ultraviolet C light can be a norm. This also makes it more cost-effective. Cover one's feet with a plastic wrap. Use both a plastic and a disposable gown. Assistant to be also provided with protective gear. Use of betadine solution prior to surgery. Plastic covered foot pedals placed as further away from the surgeon as possible to prevent spillage of fluid from the drape. Use of viscoelastic regularly throughout the surgery to prevent spurting of fluid or any aerosol spread. Removal of aqueous from the anterior chamber through the main port with visco in a controlled manner as aqueous may have viral load. If the need of staining with dye arises, prior dilution of the aqueous with saline is recommended. Turning on the irrigation only once inside the anterior chamber. Ensuring the irrigation ports are always inside the anterior chamber. 
and turning them off before removing the phaco probe out. Use of viscoelastic over the wounds to prevent spurting of fluid during hydration of ports. Disposal of swabs in a betadine filled pouch. Use of betadine drop after finishing the surgery. Disposal of gloves after sanitization. Rescrubbing between cases. Oxygenation between cases to prevent suffocation when one has a long list of surgeries. Changing the tubings and the handpiece after every case. Cleaning of all surfaces in the OT between cases. Alternatively using two OTs in high volume setups. Administration of GA in a separate OT if feasible. Or waiting for 20 minutes before entering if GA is to be administered in the same OT. Sanitization again after surgery. Use of betadine gargle and nasal spray by the surgeon after surgery. As watery eyes can cause droplet dispersion, we recommend not to perform NCT on such patients or on post-op day 1.